Let's try another one. Now, I can tell you what a lot of bad kids will do. But I don't want to, because I know if I tell you the bad things to you, you go, oh, I want to do that. I want to be a bad boy. Follow your order of operations. Order of operations says you do what first? Parentheses. Parentheses. So can I do 11 minus 2? No. No. Understand that's going to be one of the very last things you do. Notice how this 2, it's, it's right next to the parentheses, right? Since the 2 is right next to the parentheses, we know this is understood to be what? Multiplication. multiplication. And we keep saying that multiplication is sticky. It's like glue, right? So 2 is connected to all of the stuff inside here. And the 11 is separate from that because of that minus sign. You with me on that? So my focus is what can I do inside the parentheses here? So inside the parentheses, I see exponents first, right? So I'm just going to rewrite everything because I'm kind of obsessive about that. So 4 squared is what? 16. 16, and then bring down the divided by 2 minus 14. Inside the parentheses, what do I do next? I do division. So I've got 16 divided by 2. So I've got 8 minus... 14. We good with that? Yes. Now, Dennis, this goes back to the question that you were asking earlier. It would be easier to say 14 minus 8 because that's what we're used to seeing. But subtraction is not commutative. But the thought process is very similar to what you are thinking. This is a positive number that's a negative number, so I know I need to find the difference. So off to the side, my thought <coughs> is this. I need to do 14 minus 8, what do I get? I get 6. Now, since the larger absolute value is this guy right here, I keep the sign of that guy so it will be a negative 6. So, when you go from line to line, make sure that you keep everything the way you see it. Don't change signs. Be very careful. So, 8 minus 16 is negative 6. What is the next step? We've got multiplication. Remember how we said this is multiplication here? It's still multiplication all the way down. So this guy comes before the subtraction can happen. But this is what I need you guys to see. That's 11, right? It's just 11, bring it down. But look at the rest of this. We have negative 2 times negative 6. What is a negative times a negative? So this is a positive, it's a positive 12. So now I've got a nice easy problem, 11 plus 12, which is 23. Yes, Valerie? How do you know that it's not a minus sign or a negative sign? Like, how do you tell the difference? How do you tell the difference between a minus and a negative? Well, no, like in this well, how do I know this is a negative and not a minus? Yeah, it, it, it is a minus, but when it's right in front of the number 2, I'm really seeing this as a negative 2, because this is a negative 2 times a negative 6. So every time it's like that, it's going to be negative? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, you could do this. I could look at it this way. What's 2 times negative 6? That's a negative 12. So uh, you know, let, let me show it to you that way. The other way of looking at this is to say, OK, this is 11 minus, and when I do 2 times negative 6, I get negative 12. Right? But now I've got minus a minus, and what happens there? That becomes a plus 12 a plus 12, which is still equal to my original answer of 23. I don't do it that way because I feel like you're more likely to make a mistake that way. I look at this, I know that addition and subtraction will separate my pieces, will separate my terms. So I see this as a positive 11. And then over here, I know this is a minus in front, but I really just isolate away the 11 and I look at this and say, all right, that gives me a positive 12. 
So then it's 11 plus 12, and I'm good to go here. Yes, Cheryl. But there's nothing. I got confused because in the parentheses, I don't see there's like nothing else to solve. So what I did, I put You mean here? Yeah. No, no, no. Here? When you go down, yes. Okay. So I messed up. I did 11 minus 2, and then I did the 9 times now, minus 6 because I didn't see. Well, you, okay, you're right. There's nothing else to do inside the parentheses. But you can't do 11 minus 2 because this is multiplication. When this number is right next to that parentheses, when they are s they're, s they're right next, scooted up right next to each other, it's understood to be multiplication, and so those guys will be glued together. So you can't bring 11 into the party until this multiplication is done. If you do 11 minus 2 first, then that means you are choosing to do subtraction before this multiplication. And when you break the order of operations, I must break you. It was all wrong. I got it all wrong. You got okay. it. Oh. I need it. It's, it's a learning experience. It's the more and more complicated these things get, the easier it is for us to make mistakes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, someone's calling on the name of the Lord. That's good. It's <laughs> always good to do that. Let me give you one parting gift oh, here. Yeah. Sure. So let's go back to Go back to where? Where's your question? Uh, let's go back to the parentheses where you have okay, yeah. 11 minus 2. Uh, right here? No, no. The third, the third, the third. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. So, the, is that not uh, distributive? You could, you know, you're right, you could do distributive property here. And sh you know what? Let's go ahead. I mean, you can keep adding stuff here, make it more and more interesting, right? Got to move that thought bubble out of the way. So, if I do this, pretend nothing else is here. I can make this, this is still 11. Now look what you have to distribute. You are distributing a negative 2. So it goes back to the question that Valerie was asking. You've got negative 2 times 8. What's negative 2 times 8? If you're going to distribute. That's negative 16. Then I have negative 2 times negative 14. What's that? That's a positive 28. Now as I look at this, I see that I would then have a 11 minus 16 is negative 5, plus 28, and looky, looky, I still get 23, right? Hooray, math! <laughs> right? So it still works. That's the beauty thing about math. You can go about it several different ways as long as it's legit. <laughs> As long as you're not breaking order of operations and as long as you're not creating your own new math because I just think it'll be fun. Understand something. New Coke was a bad idea. New math is a bad idea. Stick to the original. Classic. That's, that, that's me. Math by 1024, it's, I'm, I'm classic all the way. All right. Can you dig it? I'm sorry, I guess I'm supposed to say it this way. Can you dig it? And you guys respond like, we can dig it. <laughs> Maybe not. I guess it's not that kind of crew. You guys aren't really my peeps. <coughs> Bless you. We got that recorded. Now, I've got two sets of parentheses, right? Okay, in case you don't see it, I do have two sets of parentheses. I've got this guy, and I've got this guy. So the order of operation says, you got to take care of this guy inside here, you take care of this stuff inside here, and then what will you do? Multiplication. Okay. So if I look at what's here. What comes first? Do you see how things are connected? Do you see the things that are glued together, the things that are stuck together? Do you? Yes. All right. 
I've got 15 divided by 3 is stuck together, and I've got 18 times 3. That stuff is stuck together. What's 15 divided by 3? 5 minus 18 times 3. You know what, you could even do a distributive property on this, because you could look at 18 as 10 plus 8. What's, what's, what's 10 times 3? 30. What's 8 times 3? 24. So 30 and 24 is? It's 54. Right? And then what's 5 minus 54? It's what? You guys speak up so everybody can hear you. 49? Ooh, oh, is, it, is the negative important? Is the negative correct? Yes, it is negative 49. Now I've got to worry about this other set of parentheses, this other group. So times, now inside this group, what will, we, what will you do first? Exponents. exponents. Understand that exponents is really just a condensed way of saying what? No, no. Exponents is multiplication. <laughs> this 5 to the 3rd is multiplication that's not written out. Remember, this is 3 factors of 5. So this guy is all stuck together. This guy is stuck together as well. And then you've got 10 by itself. See how the addition and subtraction will separate your pieces. What's 5 to the 3rd? That's 125. Minus what's 12 times 11? 100. Oh, I guess I need to teach you guys a really cool trick for multiplying times 11. It's what? 100. It is 132 minus 10. And now I just got to figure out what all of this stuff is when I put it together. You can do it. Look at this. Just look at these pieces right here. 125 minus 132. You know you don't need to worry about the ones in front of that because that's, those 100s are going to go away, right? Mm -hmm. If you do, When you do the subtraction. So is the sign of this going to be positive or negative? Negative. 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 So re you're really looking at 32 minus 25. What's that? Negative 7. So it's going to give you a negative 7 for that part. So negative 7 minus 10 is what? Negative should be negative 17. Do you all agree? Yes? I did 5 to the 3rd. And I got 125. Yeah, but but if, yeah, if I do subtraction next, then you're breaking the order of operations, which, sa which says multiplication comes first. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So I'm doing parentheses for each of these guys. Then I do exponents. So I took care of the exponents. I get 125. And then it's multiplication and division. You can, if you just subtract first, you're going out of order. I'm, I'm understanding that your question is, why don't I do 125 minus 12? Is that what you're asking? Oh, wait, what were you asking then? I thought you, I thought you would have to do 5 to the 3rd minus 12 times and then minus 10. That's what I thought. So, okay, so what's really going on here is that I see this as, this is 125 minus 12 times 11 minus 10. Is that what you're saying? Why didn't I do that? Okay, well, if I do that, what would be the next thing you would have to do? Out of all the stuff that I have inside here, the next thing I would have to do is this guy right here, and that gives me 132. See, it says do exponents first, and I get that, and I'm okay with that. But understand that here in this problem, exponents, this is really just 5 times 5 times 5, right? And this is more multiplication here. So I'm doing all the multiplication from left to right, and now that that's gone, it's all about addition and subtraction. Okay. Now, you could have added these guys here first. You could have gotten negative 142. And with the 125, it's still going to give you a negative 17. 
Now, I've got to multiply this. Is it positive or negative? My answer here is positive, and we just have to do the multiplication. Which, you know what? Maybe that means we go up to the side to make sure that we don't make a mistake here. So 7 times 9, 63, and then 7 times 4 plus 6, 6. That's OK. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I get 343, and then I've got to scoot over one, right? However you want to do that, if you want to put a 0, if you want to leave a blank, you want to put an x, I don't care. 1 times 49. is 49, so all together, what do we have? No, that's okay. I got this. You can sit back. Relax. <laughs> have another mimosa. <laughs> I get 833. What do you guys get? Same of course you get the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> that did all the work for you. There's a much more complicated way of doing this if you can track things in your head, but I'll just leave it like this for you. What do you guys think? You can do this without a calculator. If you can't, you're going to practice. Now, I told you there was a really neat trick for multiplying times 11, right? No. I, d I did. Go back and watch the video. You'll hear me say that. You didn't tell us what it was, though. I didn't, I didn't tell you what it was, but I said there was a really cool trick. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like I said, I didn't tell you where I live, but I do live somewhere. <laughs> That he, here's the trick for multiplying times 11. If it's a two-digit number, like I did 12 times 11, right? The trick for multiplying times 11, if it's a two-digit number, split up this number. Split up the digits like this, 1 and 2. And then the number that goes in the middle is the sum of those two numbers. What's 1 plus 2? And you're done. Does that work for everything? Well, what about 35 times 11? According to the trick that I just showed you, you should split up the 3 and the 5 and put their sum in the middle, which is what? 8. The answer is 385. How do I know? <laughs> if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> well, look at what happens if you were to do 35 times 11. 1 times 35 is 35, right? And then when you scoot over one, look at the columns that line up here. Check this out. Your first column has the three. The last column has the five. What's in the middle? The sum of those two numbers, which is the eight. Yep, that's what I thought you would say. <laughs> but you've got to be careful. Sometimes it gets out of hand. What's 72 times 11? See if you can tell me the answer to that. There's a 10 in the middle. 792. Because 7 plus 2 is 9, right? But I think I heard someone say something like, well, what if it was this? What's it, what if it's 58 times 11? What's the sum of 5 and 8? Here's the thing, I, I only have room for one number in the middle, right? So the last guy is 8, what's 5 plus 8? 13. But 13 won't fit, so you put the 3 here and you carry the 1. So it's going to give you 6. Because see, if I separated this and I said 5 and 8, I can't fit 13, can I? The 3 goes here, but then the 1 has to carry. So it's 638. And if you don't believe me, you can do it the long way. I want to show you something new so you can learn every day. Oh, so every time you have a double digit, then you just add this one. Okay. If I have 96 times 11, you know it's going to end in 6. What's 9 plus 6? That's 15, but the 15 won't fit, so we put the 5, we carry the 1 to the 9 and give you what? There you go. Remember, knowing is half the battle. Go, Joe.